Hi guys, it's Vivi Minjur's Warhammer Tactics series. So today we're going to talk about beating the Tau in tournaments or on casual tabletops, it doesn't matter. All we need to know is how to defeat those blue-skinned bastards. So without further ado, let's dive right in. And just like we did with the Adeptus Custodius, we'll first start by studying our enemy. And by the way, if you want to learn more about beating those jerks that are the Adeptus Custodius, I have a dedicated video about that on my channel. Go check it out. So Tau are a relatively mobile army that deals 99% of its damage in the shooting phase. It's very unusual for the Warhammer armies because most of them have at least a couple of units that you can use to fight. And with Tau you are only limited to a couple of commanders with some relics and maybe crudes. And those aren't great in combat, they are mostly just cannon fodder. So Tau are specialized in preventing the combat altogether, either by shooting you off the board or preventing you from making successful charges against them and they have a lot of abilities two stratagems in uh, particular that can prevent you from making a successful charge one for infantry that subtracts two from your charge roll and one for their battle suits also the jetpack units which are the x fate crisis suits which are the menace of most of the tournaments right now and riptides and stuff like that they can all jump shoot and jump so you can think about this as a way to subtract six from your potential charge roll in your next charge phase and combined with those stratagems that i've mentioned before it's a very difficult charge to make they have a huge number of mobility buffs that they really need to have better shooting angles and most importantly to capture those objectives like pre-game moves with devilfish disembarking from a move transport again with devilfish auto advancing the crisis suits aids with the help of the cold star commander redeploys and etc most of their units can shoot into combat so the vehicles can do it innately because they uh, have the rule called big guns never tire the infantry can use the point blank volley stratagem for one command point to turn their pulse rifles into pistols and the battle suits can do it innately for their own rule and like with the big guns never tire if they are using the heavy weapons in this case they will be suffering minus one to hit but most of the weapons on crisis suits they are assault so they won't be suffering any minuses it's so it's not like the eighth edition where your main target was to get through the screen of the infantry and drones and get to those riptides and broadsides and tag them because they will be virtually incapable of defending themselves after that they also have several efficient ways of mitigating the damage for example drones counterfire defense systems five up final pain that you can have with the ethereal and the shield generators drones are not as bad as they were in eighth edition they are now a part of each unit of battle suits or infantry in case of the ethereal and you can just choose to allocate a wound to them so they will be suffering damage as normally not like it was in eighth edition where they just suffered a mortal wound and had a five plus chance of ignoring it altogether however the shield drones now have two wounds so it's harder to get rid of them with small arms fire under defense system just gives the suit access to the stratagem that allows to turn any given damage to damage one so if you are being shot with a damage 10 harpoon of the night valiant you can turn that into damage one however as we've seen in uh, the night valiant's leaks of the data sheet the harpoon now deals straight mortal wounds so it probably won't work anymore with that weapon in particular tau were always famous for their capabilities in overwatch it was toned down in 9th edition and now the overwatch is nothing like it was in 8th but it's still fearsome especially on big units that have early warning override the support system that allows them to overwatch for free so not spending the command point for the stratagem you can however only overwatch once still so you cannot overwatch more than once in a given charge phase but still it's very useful not to spend the cp and also the model that has that support system can overwatch hitting on fives on models like storm search it's still very scary and even for example on a squad of crisis suits it can be devastating even if the whole squad doesn't hit on fives it just hits on normally on sixes 
it can still be very stressful. And also Tauk have a lot of ways to debuff the enemy, like uh, turning off auras with the ionized shock field stratagem for two command points when a model from a unit dies after an attack with an iron weapon, like the iron accelerator of a Riptide, you cannot use any auras uh, with that unit, which can be very devastating. Tauk can make it easier for models to fail morale, like with this shock and firestorm stratagem that basically makes each model that you kill with the tower unit count as two models being killed for the purposes of morale. And the Dominator Fragmentation Launcher, with, which is a prototype weapon system that replaces the air bursting fragmentation projector and it subtracts four from the leadership characteristic, which can be extremely terrifying for elite units like Vanguard Vats or Terminator. You can just make your opponent spend those two command points for the Insane Bravery to save the models and they cannot use this Insane Bravery more than once on a given unit, so it will only work for them once and then the units will have to be removed if you do the same thing with the Dominator Pregmentation Launcher in the next turn. And it works on units like Vanguard Vets with Fly Keyword, unlike the, say, Tango Foot Grenades of the Adaptus Custodius, and on those units it can be extremely powerful. Changing the move characteristic from 12 to 6 is a huge jump. So it's safe to say that if Tau player wants to make life harder for your combat units, they certainly can do that. And now when we know what we are dealing with, let's talk about the weaknesses of our enemy. And first of all, of course, we'll touch on the lack of the fight phase in the Tau arsenal. Not being able to participate in the charge fight phases decreases the damage and extra move potential a lot and i'd say that the latter part is the most important here because it's very often when melee armies are fixing their mistakes in the movement phase by charging in the charge phase and then subsequently piling in and consolidating in the fight phase sometimes you just need that extra movement to lock some enemy unit in combat or to get onto that objective and that's what tau can struggle with of course they aren't the slowest army of the bunch by any means and I've told you about all those movement shenanigans that they have but the simple fact that they are missing out on all those phases of the game changes and limits their playstyle substantially. And of course in the ninth edition we must hold those objectives in order to win the game and that puts Tau in a dangerous position because they need to get closer to the enemy. That's what was so bad about the 8th edition in case of playing against Tau is that they could place those objective markers whenever they wanted right near the deployment zone and they were able to control those. But now they need to send out tank units or fast units in case of Dale Fish Field with infantry to grab those objectives and that's what you need to seize and counter with your units. The fact that they are relying on shooting means in many cases uh, for Tau relying on seeing the targets that you can affect and it's terrain dependent. Many tournament setups nowadays there are a lot of line of sight blocking ruins that you can use to your advantage in order to mitigate some part of Tau's firepower. Of course many of Tau guns can fire out of line of sight like the AFPs or the smart missile systems but still many of their more powerful guns like the broadsides with their rail guns or the hammerheads they need line of sight. Tau have the ballistic skill of 4 up across the board, uh, just a couple of characters have a better ballistic skill like the commanders for example and it means that any negative modifiers to hit decrease the damage dramatically. In order to get to that sweet 3 plus to hit they need marker lights on the target and those marker lights need line of sight. Many of the marker light bearers can can be targeted. Fallback and shoot is very limited in this army and earlier I said that the Tau can shoot into combat but the problem with shooting into combat is that they can only shoot at what they are in combat with and what you can do is make them shoot at stuff that they don't want to be shooting at. They have almost no protection from the psychic power so whatever debuffs or buffs that you want to apply to your units you are almost untouchable in this area. Only the Farsight Enclaves have the relic uh, signature system called Talisman of Arthas Moloch which basically allows the bearer to deny one psychic power in each psychic phase and have plus one to denies. Not everyone is playing 
playing with the Sept, so you have nothing to worry about. More drones are still very much efficient against Tau, even though drones can soak some of those up, it's still very useful to have in your back pocket. Now let's see how we can exploit some of those weaknesses and use to our advantage. First of all, as I've mentioned before, try using the terrain to shelter you from some of the Tau's firepower. Of course, it won't help you against out of line of sight shooting, but cover will help you against AFPs at least. Plus, it will be harder for them to get marker lights on you, so the Tau will be limited to hitting of 4s or 5s if you have any negative modifiers to hit. So probably the best strategy will be to hide your melee units and jump them from terrain feature to terrain feature whilst your firepower platforms should be targeting the out of line of sight shooting first. Of course some of the out of line of sight shooting may be also obscured for the same reason that the opponent can use the terrain to their advantage but broadsides for example with their smart missile systems they will be out because they need to have line of sight for their railguns. Take advantage of Tao's inability to properly fight. Use each and every chance to edge yourself closer to them by charging them or using the pylons and consolidations when you're fighting. Preferably, of course, staying out of line of sight of Tao's shooting. It will be obviously hard because Tao will want to be capturing objectives and it means that you will be engaging them probably somewhere in the middle of the board where they may not be any ruins, but still think about doing that at least if you can and your main goal is to fight them off of objectives with your charging units because killing Tao's primaries is the way to win the games and the fight phase is still the best way to kill the Tao themselves because the even though the overwatch is still great it's nothing like it was in 8th edition and you are the master of the fight phase when you are playing against Tao unless you are playing with Tao yourself. Also don't forget to be using the terrain to hide from the overwatch especially when you're charging units like Storm Surge which has a very scary overwatch but with those stabilizing anchors the storm charge will probably be standing still throughout the game so they won't be able to select the place where they're standing as easily so you will be able to maneuver around them into the place position where they can't see you prior to your charge. It doesn't mean however that you need to be starting those charges from like 12 inches away just to get rid of overwatch. The overwatch mitigation is just an additional goal. Your main goal is to get those charges off. Also try to disable those marker lights as fast as possible and it's not that hard especially in case of pathfinders and drones that have no lookout sir. Pathfinders will probably be harder to deal with because they have a jump shoot jump ability of their own with a special stratagem but the drones will probably be easier because you will be targeting the unit that has them and the bearer the opponent will be forced to kill the drones or kill the valuable models that are attached to the unit. Dealing with drones, marker light drones that are attached to characters will obviously be harder because of lookout sir but you still can charge those characters when you are nearby and they cannot perform the action marker light action when they are in combat or have fallen back. And as I said earlier, you should be tagging the units to manipulate the opponent's shooting phase because, for example, broadsides don't want to be shooting those railguns into your infantry. They want to be shooting those railguns into your dreadnoughts, vehicles, and etc. Same goes for the storm surge, for example. It cannot deploy those anchors inside of engagement range because it's an action aim. They cannot do that after falling back. Storm surge can, because it's a titanic unit, it can shoot after falling back, but not with reroll hits which is very important for it. Of course, the psychic debuffs that Tao can do nothing about, like the minus one to hits that many armies have, like Dark Angels or Space Wolves. A lot of uh, psychic disciplines have a minus one to hit debuff, which is very strong against, uh, say, a Tao Crisis Team Blob. Or the minus one strength or range decreases, like the Cacodemonic uh, Curse from the Thousand Suns spells is also very powerful against Tau. So basically anything you can do in the psychic phase to make the life harder for Tau is great because they will not be able to affect it in any way, shape or form. Apart from the aforementioned relic, of course. So all in all, it's hard to deal with Tau, but it's definitely possible. If you follow the advice that I gave you in this video, you will probably be able to beat the Tau with some luck. Just be careful, select your targets thoughtfully and remember to never give up. 
So that's it guys, I hope this video was useful for you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.